So you decided this is the year you get in the best shape of your life. You know it's not going to be easy, but you know you have to start somewhere. If you watched my best beginner upper body workout video, you've probably heard this before. But of course, we cannot neglect the lower half of our body. So this is the first lower body workout I would personally do. This is the best beginner's lower body workout. Now, like I mentioned before, there are no one-size-fits-all routines. The goal of this video is I want this to be a starting point for you to build upon. I mean, so maybe it's the case that you have limited equipment, or maybe you don't have the mobility for some of these exercises. That's completely fine because overall, there is a variation of an exercise out there that you can personally do. So keep that in mind as we go through this video. To explain before I get into the workouts, when it comes to your lower body, there are six muscle groups to focus on. The quads, hamstrings, glutes, and your calves or maybe you can forget about those i tried making this as encompassing of a lower body workout as possible while still being under 60 minutes thus i will keep the maximum number of sets at three sets per exercise keep in mind that warm-ups are not included in this workout however the best warm-up of them all is simply taking two to three warm-up sets of one to five reps of whatever exercise you're currently doing and gradually scaling up in weight to your working set which is essentially the set where the load is actually difficult enough for you to perform. More generalized warm-ups may be useful as well, such as walking or jogging on the treadmill, just simple stuff to get your heart rate up. Lastly, for leg day, you should avoid using very cushiony shoes, such as running shoes, and opt for something with a flat sole. Vans or Converse All-Stars are a good option. Jumping into exercise number one, and that is three sets of a squat, predominantly focusing on the quads, but also the glutes. Now I'm going to give you two options, a little bit of a choose your own adventure here, a free weight barbell option and a machine option. Firstly, starting with the free weight option, we have a high bar barbell back squat. First off, your overall setup is extremely important on a squat, so let's start there. Now you should always use safety pins when you squat. I recommend setting it just below your range of motion. Set the rack around nipple height so that you won't need to be on your tippy toes to unrack and re-rack the bar. Since we're doing a high bar squat to bias the quads, the bar will lay firmly on your traps, so I recommend taking as narrow of a grip as possible. Shoulder width is a good standard. Now get under and lay the bar firmly on your traps, not your neck, and retract your scapula by squeezing your shoulder blades back. Hold this position throughout the entire squat. If you maintain this position properly, a shelf should be created with your traps, allowing the bar to be firmly nestled on your upper back as you do the squat. Stand up straight to unrack the bar and take three careful and very intentional steps. Your first step should be directly backwards to clear the rack. The second step should follow the first leg backwards. And the third step will be more sideways and will determine your stance width. Standing shoulder width is a pretty safe stance, but I highly recommend messing around with what's comfortable personally for you. Lastly, for most people, your feet should be pointed slightly outwards instead of directly forward, as this controls the direction that your knees will be bending. Ideally, your weight should be distributed throughout your entire foot, and if you struggle with knees caving in during a squat, then I highly recommend you look up the Tripod Foot Squat on YouTube for more info. Moving on, take a deep breath into your diaphragm. Now here you have two options. You can either hold your breath throughout the entire rep and breathe in between reps, or you can exhale on the concentric. At this point, flex your abs as if someone's going to punch you in the stomach and initiate the movement by bending your knees and hips simultaneously as if you're sitting in a chair. Aim to get at least low enough so that your quads are parallel to the ground while controlling the weight all the way down. This is known as controlling the eccentric. This is known as hitting parallel. And if you're able to go lower, that's even better since that means a greater quad stretch which is associated with better quad growth. Now keep in mind when you're coming down, you want to keep your entire foot planted on the ground at all times. Once you hit at least parallel, explode up by thinking about straightening both knees and hips at the same time. If you struggle with leaning forward because your knees are straightening before your hips, think about violently thrusting your hips forward and squeezing your cheeks at the top. It sounds funny, but this will help you stay upright and follow through on the squat. And that is a high bar squat. Now always remember to control the descent and aim for a 2 second tempo on the eccentric. I recommend aiming for around 6 to 8 reps for each set and promise me you try to get at least one more rep once it starts burning. 
This is to ensure you're training hard enough. And if you did train hard enough, you'll probably need roughly three to five minutes of rest in between sets. Now, if you don't want a barbell squat, an alternative would be the machine hack squat. Arguably better for hypertrophy because of the stability and being able to train all the way to failure without having a spider. This exercise can have some flaws, namely the range of motion being an issue for shorter individuals or people that just squat really deep. Also, we're trying to be nitpicky. Technically, the pendulum squat is a better quad machine, but they're a little bit of a unicorn to find and they're not really beginner friendly. Now, similar to the barbell squat, you want to set the rack height so that your knees are just slightly bent. Make sure your back and shoulders are firmly in contact with the cushion and backrest so there's no slack there. When it comes to your stance, it should be similar to the barbell squat, but do keep in mind the closer your feet are to the bottom of the platform, the better of a quad stretch you'll be able to get, which is better for hypertrophy. To initiate the movement, straighten your knees and hips to unrack, and use your hands to release the safety. Now, as like before, take a deep breath from your diaphragm and either breathe in between reps or exhale on the concentric. Now, bend your knees and hips simultaneously while controlling the entire descent down. And similar to the barbell squat, you want to try to get as low as possible or at least hitting parallel with your quads. Now, explode up remembering to thrust your hips to the point that you're squeezing your cheeks at the top. This will help you generate more force and follow through on the squat. When you're done, use your hand to activate the safety and slowly come down until you audibly hear the safety catching the weight. Aim for around 6 to 8 reps per set and promise me that you're going to try to get one more rep once it starts burning. I recommend 3 to 5 minutes of rest in between each set and also remember to stay hydrated throughout the entire session. I literally always drink water when I'm resting. Now if you're watching this and you're thinking, alright workouts are great but I'm looking for a full workout program, I'm looking for someone to guide me throughout the entire process and quite frankly I hear so much misinformation I don't really know what to follow. And I highly recommend you apply to my exclusive one-on-one -on -one fitness coaching program where I pretty much do just that. I create a customized workout program just for you, give you recipes for meals that are fit for your specific goals with the help of a nutritionist, and pretty much am there for you to ask me any questions you might have throughout the entire process of your fitness journey. So if you're ready to achieve your fitness goals in a sustainable way, apply in the link in the description and I'll be in touch through text or email. Exercise number two is two sets of a Smith Machine hip thrust for the glutes. Now let's start with the setup. Make sure to have a hip thrust pad or yoga mat for cushion, otherwise it's not going to be a fun exercise to do. Now place the bench sideways along the Smith Machine and lay your upper to mid back on the bench. Your feet should be firmly on the ground and positioned so that a 90 degree angle is created with your knees. Keep in mind, if the bench slides, I recommend putting some plates or dumbbells behind it for more stability. Now your feet should be roughly shoulder width apart, and I like to flare my feet out just slightly, but this is optional. Now you want to set the bar height low enough so that your hips can easily be in contact with the bar somewhere midway through the range of motion. And the bar should be resting roughly along your hip crease, not too high or not too low. Now you may have to mess with the distance of the bench to get the feet placement right. Also keep in mind if you're shorter, in some cases if the bench is too high, you may need to place 25 pound plates under your feet to elevate yourself. Now take a deep breath through your diaphragm and flex your abs slightly. Violently squeeze your glutes to extend your hips and unrack the bar and then use your hand to clear the safety. Bend your hips to allow the bar to lower while still being in control, remember the eccentric is always important. And as a reminder, keep your abs flexed so that your hips don't fall back during this part. That is how you end up hurting your lower back. Now once you get to the point where your hips can't bend anymore, violently squeeze your glutes once more while keeping your abs flexed. Hold the top for a split second for maximum clench. Now when you're done, bend your hips to lower the bar and use your hands to re-rack the safety somewhere midway through your range of motion. Of course, always remember to control the descent and aim for a 2 second eccentric. I recommend hitting 6 to 10 reps for each set but do promise me that you try to get at least two more reps once it starts burning. I recommend two to three minutes of rest between each set. Moving on to exercise number three, and that is two sets of a barbell Romanian deadlift for the posterior chain, that is predominantly your hamstrings and glutes. As you get more advanced and handle more weight, it may be helpful to get some lifting straps so that your grip doesn't become a limiting factor. Coming from purely a hypertrophy lens, the Romanian deadlift is a better exercise than the conventional deadlift because you can actually safely control the eccentric, unlike with the traditional deadlift. 
Now you might be wondering what's the difference? Well, essentially it's a deadlift starting from the shortened position where you're completely standing up. Now for the setup, walk up to the bar standing slightly closer than shoulder width apart. Your shins should nearly be in contact with the bar, and if you look down, it should look as if the bar is going directly through your midfoot. Now straighten your arms and grab the bar at the width where your arms are perpendicular to the bar. If you don't have lifting straps, I recommend using an alternate grip. This is where one hand is over the bar and the other hand is under. Here comes an extremely important part. Pull the slack out of the bar by first gripping the bar, then raising your butt in the air while keeping your arms straight. Lastly, you should be engaging your lats. An auditory click-like sound should be heard. Hearing that sound is pretty much how you know the slack is being pulled out of the bar. At this point, lower your butt so that your spine is relatively straight. Now, pulling the slack out of the bar is kind of a hard thing to explain, but it should feel like you're bringing your shoulders down, puffing out your chest a bit, and bending the bar clockwise with your right hand. Now, the point of doing this is to maintain upper body stability and avoid excessive rounding of the back if you jerk the bar. At this point, take a deep breath into your diaphragm and flex your core slightly. Think about pushing your feet into the ground and thrusting your hips forward. Ideally, your hips and knees should be straightening simultaneously. And if you did that correctly, well congrats, you just performed a regular deadlift. Now here's where the RDL actually begins. While maintaining your core tightness and keeping your lats engaged, slowly bend your knees and hips down to the point where you feel a strong tug on your hamstrings. Now I recommend stopping before your low back starts getting really tense. This should be roughly around knee height but can vary greatly. In fact, RDL depth can be a bit of a contentious topic. My personal recommendation is going down to the point where your hips can continue to move backwards, but stop when going lower means your lower back just bending without your hips really continuing to move backwards. Because at this point your glutes are pretty much maximally stretched, and going lower generally is where people start complaining about low back pain. Not saying that you're going to get lower back pain if you go lower. But if you want a better stretch on your hamstrings, then I would just opt for a stiff leg deadlift where you keep your knees more straight. Now press your feet back into the ground to straighten the knees and hips, and remember to squeeze your glutes to help avoid doing a good morning-like movement. And when you're done, simply bend your knees and hips to lower with the bar instead of just dropping it. Now always remember to control the descent back down and aim for a 2 second eccentric, otherwise why are you doing an RDL in the first place? The rep range for an RDL should be slightly higher, allowing for lighter weight. So I aim for around 8 to 12 reps for each set, and promise me you try to get at least one more rep once it starts burning. 2-3 to three minutes of rest is recommended. Halfway through the workout, now we're moving on to exercise number 4 and 5, and that is 2 sets of a leg extension for the quads, superset with a seated hamstring curls for the hamstrings. Now a superset is simply when you string together two exercises into one combined set. Starting with leg extensions, adjust the back of the seat so that your knees line up with the axis of rotation. Sometimes you might need to put a plate on the back of the seat or on the seat to help you get there. Now adjust the pin so that you're able to get your knees bent to around 90 degrees. And place the ankle adjustment so that the pad lies nestled between your shins and ankle. Your feet can be pretty much straight or slightly bent outwards, it's not going to make a big difference. Now that you're set up, pull yourself into the seat by pretending to shrug your traps while gripping onto the side handles. This will help you keep your butt on the seat so you're able to avoid momentum and actually get a good stretch on your quads. Now take a deep breath through the diaphragm, flexing the core slightly, and straighten your knees as best as you can, holding the top for a split second. Now slow the descent back down, aiming for around a 2-4 to four second tempo on the eccentric. Also try to avoid having the weight stack touch the bottom so that you're able to keep tension in that stretch part of the exercise and avoid bouncing the weight. Now aim for around 10-12 to 12 reps for each set, and promise me that you're going to try to get 3 more reps once it starts burning. And be prepared when that happens because for some reason, this exercise starts burning way before you actually reach failure. Now we're moving on to the seated hamstring curl, and I recommend using the seated version over the lying version because you get a better stretch on your hamstrings, which should be productive for hypertrophy. Now firstly, you want to set the seat position so that your knees are lined up with the axis of rotation on the machine. Also set the pin so that your legs are completely straight, and set the foot pad so that it lands around your Achilles tendon area. 
and then adjust the bracing pad so that it's tightly holding your hips down, similar to a roller coaster. Now grab onto the brace, straighten your arms, and think about pushing your arms into the brace so that you stay firmly planted on the seat. Now I recommend keeping your feet pointed slightly outward or completely straight, and keep your foot dorsiflex. You'll have better force transfer this way. Now to initiate the movement, bend your knees while keeping your butt glued to the seat. Think about getting your heel to touch your butt. Once you get there, slowly allow your knees to straighten while being in total control, aiming for around a 2-4 second tempo on the eccentric. And make sure you get your knees entirely straight before going for the next rep. One additional thing you can do is hunch forward and hug the bracing pad to get an even better stretch on the hamstrings. Keep in mind while getting a better stretch will likely be beneficial for muscle growth, there is a slight trade-off here since by doing so you're going to reduce the stability of the movement, which can ultimately prevent you from actually training all the way to failure. So what I recommend is starting off in that hunched over position and get that good stretch, and as that becomes impossible to execute properly, come back and squeeze out a few more reps while laying all the way back on the seat. Aim to get around 10-12 to 12 reps for each set, and promise me once again to try to get 3 more reps once it starts burning. Again, this is an exercise you can safely take all the way to failure. Now you should take a 1 minute rest between the leg extension and the hamstring curl, and then a 2 minute rest after the hamstring curls is recommended. Moving on to the last exercise, and that is exercise number 6, 2 sets of a standing calf raise. Now you can technically end the workout here, but if you also want to train your calves, I recommend a standing calf raise either on a leg press or a calf raise machine, or worse comes to worse, a smith machine. Keep in mind, by standing I pretty much just mean keeping your knees straight so that you can best bias the gastrocnemius, which is the largest part of your calf. I'm going to demonstrate with a leg press since it's the most stable variant. Now set the seat distance so that your knees are slightly bent while at rest, and place your foot at the bottom of the platform so that only the balls of your feet and above are in contact with the platform. Your foot should start in a dorsiflex position and I recommend a slightly narrower than shoulder width stance. Also keep your feet pointed either straight up or slightly outward. Now initiate the movement by plantar flexing, aka getting on your tippy toes, and try to push with your toes as hard as you can while holding the top position for a split second. Slowly allow your foot to come back to the dorsiflex position, aiming for a two second tempo on the eccentric. Afterwards, pause in that stretch position for at least one second before going for the next rep. This is to avoid using momentum. I recommend focusing on pushing through your big toe so that the weight doesn't roll over to the outside of your foot. Now aim for around 10 to 15 reps for each set, and honestly might as well take all the sets all the way to failure, so once you reach failure, go for three more. And that was the lower body workout. Now don't forget to cool down stretch afterwards and great job for getting through this tough workout. You're definitely not going to want to avoid stretching by the way, or you're probably going to regret it in 48 hours. Now keep in mind this workout isn't entirely inclusive, but I want this to act as a starting point. Additional exercises you can include are glute medius kickbacks for the glute medius, Bulgarian split squats for a length and focus rectus femoris exercise, hip adductors for the adductors, and seated calf raises for the soleus. Some of these can be great additions or alternatives to the six exercises and have their own small advantages, but not necessary. So with that in mind, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos to level up your physique. I'll see y'all in the next one.